Hello, I'm Ivan Guillon and be welcome to the second hands-on activity. In this video, we're going to discuss a little bit uh, about atomic calculations with minus half code. So the objective of this video is to introduce minus half code, uh, which will be uh, further used in DFT minus half method, okay, for gap correction of crystal materials. So uh, to start, I would like to show you uh, the minus half uh, web page when you can see uh, the introduction to the code, where it started, uh, how to install it, the commands you can use, update documentation and so on. So uh, I will change a little bit uh, so you can see here is the web page. Uh, this program was developed uh, by Rick Feitosa and see uh, here you can you can see uh, further uh, theory about uh, the FT minus half how it's implemented uh, Rick did a great job in documentation explanation of uh, cut parameter uh, how to perform the semi occupation fractional occupations references um, for the theory of the method implementations and applications to different materials. Uh, the minus half code, uh, as I'm talking right now on August of 2022, it's compatible with uh, VASP code, the NAB initial simulation package, but we are working on, uh, viabil on the implementation to different codes. You can install it with pip package it's you go to the terminal and, and type pip stall minus half and this should be enough uh, you can have you can check the different uh, commands you can you have commands to check the the valence band maximum character conduction band minimum uh, the bands characters calculate the band gap to run atomic calculations which will be interest and also the this command to create input, uh, which we will focus on specifically on this tutorial, on this video, on atomic calculations. Okay, so back to the presentation, and you can you can see. Uh, please uh, just uh, search for minus half coding should be enough. Okay, um, next. Uh, so this is the website documentation, uh, the command to install, I have already installed it in my computer and we can go to the first steps, uh, let's type minus half, uh, minus minus help and okay so with this command you can see the commands and if you for example we are going to to use this command create input and also if you add this you have some help on the specific command which basically prepares our input files to minus half code okay so you have these different options and so on um, so let us start uh, in this tutorial with a system of study of nitrogen atom. So uh, uh, if you already saw the other videos, we are working on tutorial of DFT minus half. The system of investigation is gallium nitride, which has the top of the valence band derived from p orbitals of nitrogen. So motivated by this, we are going to study on this video uh, uh, atomic calculation of nitrogen. Okay, so let us start with creation of input file and the run of atomic uh, calculation, DFT atomic calculation. Uh, fine. So for create output, it should be enough just to add uh, the, the symbol of the atom, uh, the element. So we, if you like to create an input for nitrogen, this should be enough. Uh, the input file is created as imp file. 
So uh, here you have um, PBE calculation, okay, with these uh, nitrogen atoms. Uh, here we have one orbital on the core, which is 1s2, which is not interesting for us. We have four orbitals in the valence. Uh, we have uh, 2s, 2p, and two empty orbitals. Uh, this should be no, um, not much interest for us. This one, uh, we have 2s2 fully occupied and three electrons on the 2p orbital. Uh, so this already prepares uh, the input file. One specific issue is this, this file, since it runs with Fortran uh, language, it's sensitive to spaces. So he already implemented one creation of outputs that already has the, the nice uh, uh, number of spaces here and then we can uh, let me just see the exactly uh, command we can run atomic uh, with no okay we already uh, calculated the atomic it generates some potential files and the one we are going to look at it right now is the out file so we have a nuclear charge of uh, plus seven elementary charges uh, four valence orbitals one core orbitals electronic charge of seven this is a neutral atom and this provides us different uh, informations. This one not relevant for us for now. I would like to look uh, to show the output data for the orbitals, which you should be interested in, especially on these two. We have the orbital 2s and 2p from the uh, more ex the outer electronic uh, shell. Okay, so um, this 2s orbital has this energy and 2p, uh, the most outer and energetic level orbital, uh, is minus 0 0.52 uh, Rydberg. Okay, so this, all these energies are given in Rydberg. And also it provides us um, some information of total energies. We would like to to pay attention for this total energy here, minus 108.8 Riedeberg. Uh, and finally, that's all you need to know for now about the, the output file. Okay, so uh, as you can see, this is a very cheap calculation since it's just um, DFT calculations of uh, an atomic code. Okay, so the, the anatomy of the input file, as you can see, you have uh, some comments that you can comment with this hashtag Sino. Uh, the simulated atom should be specified here. This one have the flavor of the DFT calculations you are you're interested to perform. PB stands for PBE calculation, CA for local density approximation. And it is important that you can add S uh, if you are interested on uh, performing spin polarized calculations, which for this video we are going to, to be interested on, since we are going to calculate some uh, variations of the total energy. So we can improve, uh, and, and on this line you have the number of uh, core orbitals and the number of valence orbitals and in this example uh, I just type the the occupied orbitals okay uh, and for now I think I already explained these uh, these examples and uh, I'd like now to adjust the input file to perform a spin polarized calculation since we have these three uh, these three electrons uh, in 2p orbital I'd like to to say to the DFT calculations that the three should be put on the 
with the same spin and it changes the amount of exchange energy. So we should add here S for spin calculation, um, spin polarized calculation. Then this, uh, this second, uh, the second number, this should be spin up, the occupation of spin up orbitals and the occupation of spin down orbitals. So on uh, 2s2, we should put uh, one spin up electron and one spin down electron. Okay, that's fine. And for the three electrons, let us put all of spin up orbital. Okay, so that's fine. This should be everything for now. Uh, please check the total energy minus 108 and now we should uh, have a, a better result running once again run atomic command and now we have a more uh, a lower energy with Right now we have spin up, uh, in energy with spin up and energy with spin down and so on for 1s, 2s and 2p and so on. So uh, this should be one eigenvalue of the uh, modern energy occupied orbital. Okay, and, and here you can see a small, uh, smaller deviations from the other uh, spin up and spin down uh, results okay fine so we have one uh, PB DFT calculation for now uh, fine and right now we have on the our presentations uh, some comments on the modifications we performed uh, we have occupation now with spin polarized calculations for spin up and spin down and we have to add this s and then we have improved results uh, from the atomic calculations fine um so uh let us investigate a little bit further on for example if you like to calculate uh ionization energies the amount of energy you have to give the atom to extract one electron so uh, starting with uh, explic uh, explicit approach, we can run on a nitrogen plus one. So basically, we're going to remove one electron. Let us just change the occupation of 2p orbital to two electrons. And this should be enough. Uh, remember that we start with minus 109 Rydberg. And uh, let's change the occupation of the most energetic orbital. Uh, first we had three electrons, now we had just two. And let us run atomic calculations once again. And that's fine. And let's check the out file. Let us... So, uh, as you can see, you have a nuclear charge of seven. Uh, electronic charge of 8 and now we had one uh, ionic charge of plus one elementary charge okay so um, right now oh, these values should be changed a little bit since uh, we have already uh, extracted one electron that changes the electron electric uh, interaction energies and so on um, so we have this one is the last uh, occupied orbital, the, the following ones are unoccupied and here you can check the right now as you uh, as you perform an ionization of the system you have minus 107 Rydberg okay so oh sorry I was showing uh, here the command lines as you can see right now we have ionic charge uh, seven nuclear charge six electrons and the eigenvalues are changed as you can see and the total energy also changes from 
109 to 107 okay so back to the presentation um, right now you see that the original total energy the total energy have after the ionization and this variation the difference between the total energies from uh, with n electrons and n minus one electrons uh, we have an addition of uh, something uh, larger than one Rydberg converted to electron volts, uh, 14.9 electron volts. Uh, compare with experimental value from the database that I show you before. I think it's NIST. Yes, it's NIST. Some experimental data. We have a uh, a very nice performance with DFT uh, with an error of 2.6%. Uh, it for you it might be not be enough, but uh, uh, that's kind of nice calculation for the let at least for uh, toy models like we are doing for now. Okay, uh, so with this we are performing two DFT calculations with different numbers of electrons. Okay. Uh, and let's check some uh, theorems, uh, for example, Koopman's theorems, which says that this difference, the ionization energy, should be given at least for exact uh, exchange correlation potential. This should be equal to the minus uh, the last occupied uh, Comchan orbital. And if you check on this uh, line here, uh, considering the the DFT calculations, uh, the highest orbital uh, gives us a Comchan eigen value of 0 0.61, which of course is not anything close to to actual ionization energy. It gives us something like uh, some 44 percent error. So this is a very, uh, really poor performance, okay? So this is something which actually occurs, something similar to the calculation of energy gaps on, on semiconductors. So, so it, it kind of emerges from these uh, problems uh, on atomic orbitals, okay? Uh, so this is actually Koopman's theorem in, it should be should occur to the um, should be uh, hold to the ex exact uh, exchange correlation, but when you go to actual approximations like LDA, PBA, and so on, it really does not work. Uh, another theorem which DFT minus F relies on is Yannick's theorem. theorem. Uh, which says that the variation of the total energy with respect to the occupation it's given by the uh, the eigen value. So this is a, essentially a, a basic mathematical demonstration. So it since we consider just the the total energy, it still holds for LDA and PBE if you consider the total energy is calculated by these approximations. And if you look to this, if you perform a uh, ionization of system, uh, this ionization calculated by LDA or PBE, it equal to this integral uh, of the integral of the eigenvalue variation within, uh, with respect with the occupation of 2p orbital. And for most of systems, we see in our calculations that this uh, eigenvalue changes linearly with the occupation. For, for uh, this test specifically, it's uh, calculated with the variation of occupation of 2p, occupation of nitrogen atoms, and 2p eigen state. So you can see it's approximately uh, linear. And if it holds uh, this linear behavior, you can change this integral by the uh, the eigenvalue calculated 
on the halfway on a uh, half ionization okay so uh, the idea here is to perform in half ionization to put the occupation uh, 2.5 on uh, on uh, atomic calculations so this is what you're going to do for now uh, let us just show you uh, my terminal let's do not forget once again and so the idea here is to uh, I did one neutral calculation with three electrons one fully ionization now i'm going to put on these occupations 2.5 electrons which stands something like a half occupation this is transition states if you like um and right now i'm going to run and dump calculations okay it's done and if we see uh, not the input but the output file okay right now uh, we are going to mathematically uh, considering 6.5 electron have a, a ionic charge of half elementary charge uh, it can be done with no problem mathematically and if you see here uh, the eigenvalue is changing accordingly uh, but this one is what we should uh, point for now uh, the last uh, occupier orbital it has an energy of minus 1.08 and 6 and if we check the the experimental data it is really close to it experimental data is 1.09 and we have almost the same thing just 0.4 percent of error so this is a very nice performance and we show uh with this video how you can calculate the atomic systems and dft calculations calculate of total energies uh kumshan eigenvalues and we focus on calculation of ionization energies first with explicit approach uh, performing two uh, calculations one with neutral charge and one with plus one charge and we show how to use ion experiment to be able to calculate this ionic charge with only one dft calculations with this half ionization approach which give us a very nice performance and the equipments with you considered a, approximated exchange collection potential it does not work very well but Ian experiment still holds very nicely okay so this is enough for this video thank you very much for your attention